We live in a crazy world. You know what people say? The Bible is a tool of white supremacy to further keep us blacks under their feet. Look here. It says, slaves, obey your masters. That's why they have the slave Bible. What does it actually say, though? What does it actually say? Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. You go to a job, you obey your master. But then they talk about, oh, you're not supposed to. They have a problem with the Bible. Yet they go to a job every single day and obey their master according to the flesh. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the, the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of respect to persons, meaning it doesn't matter if a person is the servant or the master. God is not a respecter of persons. He's going to give right to those who did right. He's going to give wrong to those who did wrong, no matter if they are in the position of a servant or a master. Now, let's jump back up a few verses to get the complete context. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit unto in the Lord. What does it say after that? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be the scourge. So it's addressing everybody. It's addressing the wives. It's addressing the husbands. It's addressing the children. It's addressing the fathers. Children, obey your parents in all things in the Lord, of course. But guess what? Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't do stuff out of the way that's going to discourage them in the faith or whatever they are sent here to do. So in the context, excuse me. So the context is order and respect, no matter the position, nor how high or low a person is for all will be held accountable before God almighty. Just because a husband is head over his wife, he isn't exempt from judgment. Just because a wife is under the umbrella of her husband, she will still be held accountable. Just because the boss, CEO, or even slave master is over you, they will still be held accountable. Just because you are the employee or slave, you will still be held accountable. God can exalt the servant or slave to a king or a queen, just like he can make the CEO or slave master a servant or a slave. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to flesh. And this is um, Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 8. According to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good, excuse me, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. This includes slaves. So even if it did say slaves, we will all be held accountable. But look what it says right after that. And ye masters, do the same things unto them. Unto who? Unto the servants, or as some people say, the slaves. Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven neither is there respect to persons with them. What should bother you as a non-believer is that people will blatantly lie against what the Bible actually says in its context, just to say the Bible is lying and to get you to believe it, meaning believe their lie. 
if the Bible is a lie, then there is no need to lie to prove the Bible is a lie. That's contradictory and hypocritical to call the Bible a lie, yet they are lying. I don't lie on people. Why? Because a liar will always prove themselves as a liar. You will know a tree by its fruit. Fruit comes from seeds. Seeds are words and words are spiritual. You will know a person by their spirit. It doesn't say slave. Yet if it did say slave, the context, the message is still the same. Did you ever ask yourself, if a person is a slave, how do they get there? If a, let's take this for example. Let's say a child comes into the world and they find out that they were conceived because their mother was R, you know, the, the big R. And their mother thought about aborting them, but they didn't. Should they stop living life? Or should they do the right things with their life? They can't help the situation that they were born into. A lot of times when people were in slavery, it was for a reason. Some of them legit and some of them were just a, a messed up situation. But these different situations is where our, our testimonies are forged. Not under the, the, the glorious lights of, of everything going the way we wanted to go every single time. That's not a testimony. That's not what Christ went through himself. Yes, bad things happen in the world. Yes, slavery is in the Bible. Slavery is in the history of mankind. But there are reasons for all these different things. And so again, if it did say slave, what does it matter? What does it, what does it matter if the slave masters are going to be held accountable regardless? If it says servant, what does it matter when the servant and the master are going to be held accountable for what they've done regardless because God is not a respecter of persons? Yeah, you have these people that say, oh, it says slave when it doesn't say that it says servant. But even if it did, we still see the point. But just for argument's sake, it says slave. So this is to push white supremacy, blase, 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 blase. And when you go look at these people's lives, they're living unrighteously. They're not halfway taking care of their children. And we can go down the list. They are delinquents. They need to be locked up, both black and white, because they're not contributing nothing to society, to life that is going to help others grow. Now you may say, well, what you're contributing to society isn't helping people grow. You may not agree with the message, but I challenge people to live righteously. And if I am the evil man, evil person that people try to make me out to be, then I'm still challenging you to do better because you're looking at me and saying, I don't want to, I don't want to be him. I don't want to do what he's doing. I want to do better. And even in my message of what y'all call hate, I'm still pushing you to do better to be righteous through Christ.